Next biomolecule that we're going to look at is lipids. So lipids are insoluble in water. So usually they are not soluble in water. They are nonpolar. So remember this term. Nonpolar usually means not water soluble. Uh, if you put butter right, or oil in water, you know they don't mix well. Right? So lipids contain uh, some of the common elements such as carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now remember these three elements are also in carbohydrates. So we have a C, H2O, and then this is N, right? This is the chemical formula for carbohydrates. So you can see carbohydrates only have three elements, right? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. For lipids, those three elements are common. Sometimes lipids may also have phosphorus. And that's when we look at phospholipid, right? Which is a, a very important component for cell membrane. Okay. So this is kind of one uh, difference between carbohydrates and lipids, right? Because lipids may have um, phosphorus, which is not present in carbohydrates. If I say we're trying to figure out what an unknown chemical is, and it looks like the chemical has a phosphorus in the structure, then you immediately know that this unknown chemical is not going to be carbohydrate, right? Because carbohydrates do not have phosphorus. Now, lipids are also used for energy storage. We all well know that lipids, fats are lipids, and fats have a lot of energy. And when we eat excessive, excessive amount of food, we gain weight, right, in the form of a fat. So fat is a perfect energy storage as well, just like uh, carbohydrates. And they can actually hold more energy than carbohydrates. And that's because proportionally, lipid molecules have a more nonpolar carbon-hydrogen bond. Remember, this carbon-hydrogen bond can hold a lot of energy, right? Um, another term I want to point out is over here, hydrophobic. Hydro means water, phobic means fear. So lipids are hydrophobic molecules, meaning they do not like water, they do not want to mix with water. So this is almost equivalent as nonpolar or insoluble in water. Okay. Lipids have a few main categories, fats and oils. Those are the lipids that we see the most in our daily life. Waxes, usually they're found in, in both plants and animals, so we'll talk about them. Phospholipids, this is important because they form the backbone of the cell membrane. Steroids, you're probably familiar with some of the steroids, but not others. Again, we'll talk about this in detail. Let's look at fats or oil first. Like I said, the lipids are not strictly polymers, right? Because they do not have that repeated subunit. So you can see in the structure over here, so this is triglycerides, the most common type of fat. So triglyceride, the name is here. Uh, the structure has two components. The first one is glycerol. So glycerol uh, has just this carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, elements. So in the ATIT study menu, they actually list glycerol as a type of uh, carbohydrate. So I actually think of glycerol as a type of alcohol, okay? because you can see this carbon backbone connected with these hydroxyl groups, right? OH, that's the hydroxyl group. Okay, so that's a one main component of fat specifically triglyceride, that's what we're looking at. Second component is fatty acid. So you can see over here, tri means three, right? So you're gonna have a three fatty acid chain and each one will be connected to the hydroxyl group. And, but eventually the hydrogen is gonna come off, right? So it's going to be connected to this oxygen. So you can see the structure looks like this, right? So you have this glycerol backbone, and in this backbone, you have a three fatty acid chains attached to it. So that's the structure for triglyceride, the most common fat. Second type of lipids is a waxes. 
So again, waxes, just like other lipids, they're hydrophobic, they're not water soluble um, because they repel water because they fear water, right? So these uh, wax molecules will repel water. Because of that, waxes are used by animals to stay dry. So you can look at uh, this picture down here. It's a really cool picture I found it on the internet. So this feather is covered with hydrophobic wax, right? So, and you can see, you know, there's a water drop here, but the water does not wet the feather, right? Does not, does not make the, the feather wet. Uh, instead, it's gonna stay on its own because of the wax layer on the feather repels the water. So water couldn't penetrate. So it would just stay on the surface and then the feather stays dry, right? And when the animal shakes, then the water will just come off. And this is critical for a lot of animals, especially for animals that need to go into water to look for food or to uh, avoid predators, right? For example, waterfalls uh, like ducks, you know, um, they need to get into water to find food, but they can't get wet, right? If they get wet, then um, they may experience um, hypothermia. They can get cold. Um, they, if they get wet, you know, when you get wet, water stays in our body. It really makes your body weigh more, right? So if those birds get, you know, too wet, they, their bodies might be too heavy to fly. So they may have to stay in water and they get cold, so they may drown. So that's why it's important to have this wax layer on the feathers. And same thing for a lot of mammals as well, right? They have a little bit of wax layer on their fur so that they don't get uh, very wet when they get into water. The wax layer is also found in some plant leaves, right? You can see in this picture, the leaf uh, appears very shiny, right? That's because of the wax layer on the surface. The third type of uh, lipid is phospholipids. Now, this is an uh, important group of lipids because they're found in cell membrane. And everybody has a cell membrane, right? Including prokaryotic cells like bacteria. Phospholipids are composed of three main components. Right? There's phosphate over here. So you have a one phosphate, uh, which is bonded with a four oxygen. Now, phosphate is negatively charged. So you can see this negative charge here on one of the oxygens, this glycerol group, and then two fatty acid chains. So different than triglycerides, phosphate lipids only have two fatty acid chains in the structures. Phosphate lipids contain this polar head, which is this uh, phosphate and glycerol component. And because the phosphate group is negatively charged, so it likes water. It mixes with the water very well. So the head is polar, it likes water. The fatty acid tails are nonpolar, right? Uh, we talk about the fatty acids are hydrophobic, right? They repel water. Okay. So remember, uh, phospholipids are the backbone of cell membrane. And because of the phospholipids, the cell membrane is selective in terms of what can go through the cell membrane. So again, the, the cell membrane is kind of like the door of your house, right? It controls what can come in, what can go out. So it has this selective permeability. It's only permeable to certain molecules, but not others. All right, last group of lipids, steroids. So steroids usually have this typical four interlocking hydrocarbon rings. Okay? So when you look at the structure, uh, there are carbons here and they're connected with hydrogen, but they're just not shown here. But these are definitely hydrocarbon rings. And you can see all the storates, they have four adjoining rings, right? One, two, three, four. So this is uh, the steroid skeleton. So that's kind of the, the basic structure. And then depending on what molecule you're looking at, you can add components to it, right? For example, Cholesterol, that's something that we're all very familiar with. The cholesterol uh, has this particular structure. So you can see some of the uh, chemical groups can be added to this kind of base structure. There are a lot of substances that we know about are actually steroids. For example, we talk about bile salts, 
right? Uh, bile salts are in bile, which is secreted by the liver, but temporarily stored in the gall bladder. Right? So bile contains bile salts and bile salts are actually stored. And the bile salts help us uh, break down, digest fats. And when we eat a lot of, uh, here, fats. So when we eat a lot of fatty food, we need a bile salts to break down those fats. Vitamin D is actually a steroid. You probably never know that uh, vitamin D is actually a type of steroid. Sex hormones, estrogen, testosterone, those are um, also steroids. And some of the adrenal cortical hormones are also steroids. And again, remember the hormones are chemical messengers, right? That's how the cells can communicate with one another uh, through chemical messengers. Foods rich in lipids, um, things that you're very familiar with, meat, dairy products, nuts, fish, oils. But of course, these three are healthier, right? They contain the good fats. 